This video is going to look at two important tables behind flows, subflows, and their executions in ServiceNow. So I'm in ServiceNow uh, Workflow Studio, which is part of the Washington DC release. Uh, so this was formerly known as a flow designer. And in here I get, uh, when I go to the flows list, I can see a list of all my flows. And here I can see a list of all the subflows in the instance. And so the question is, uh, where is it getting this from, right? Where is the table? Because in Workflow Studio and in Flow Designer before this, you can't see what the table name is from the URL. It's not, uh, it's, it's not listed there. And you can't see it on this video either because I have this screen cut off uh, below that. But uh, you, you can't see like you can in, in the classic UI where it's coming from. So we're just going to go take a look at this same table in the classic UI. So I go over here to my classic UI. Oops, I already had it fired up here. So I go over to the uh, filter navigator, uh, to the navigator, and I go sys underscore hub underscore flow dot list. And here I'm going to get the same table. And so this table actually contains both flows and uh, subflows. So if I wanted to just see flows, I'm going to put the flow type column, uh, make that visible and do a show matching on it. And so this is uh, just my flows uh, from this same, same data, uh, just a different UI. Um, so why would you want to go in here uh, to see it in classic UI instead of just using it in here? Uh, well, to be honest, uh, there is a lot less of a reason to do that now than there was a few versions ago. Uh, because ServiceNow has brought in a lot of the table functionality um, into this UI, right? So you can now choose columns that you want. And uh, I think you could do filters before, but uh, um, right. And primarily before, the reason I used to go into the classic UI a lot to get to the table was because if you did filters, and this has been fixed. So if you did a filter, so let's say I want to do, right, I only want to see visual task board spoke flows and I open one up. Uh, previously, I think this is like Utah and before, or maybe Tokyo and before, if you went back to the flows tab, it would lose your filter. <laughs> so that, that made me crazy. And uh, so that was a good reason to use the classic UI. But as you can see, they fixed that because it keeps the filter. So that's not really a good reason anymore to, uh, to do that. To, to look at it in the classic UI. However, there are still some functionalities in the classic UI that the new UI doesn't have. Uh, and probably the most important of those is the export functionality. So if you, you know, had a whole bunch of flows that you just wanted to export to um, XML, for example, to you know, back them up or whatever, uh, you can do that from classic UI. You can't do that from the new UI yet. I'm sure they will add it at some point. Uh, so sys underscore hub underscore flow is uh, both your flows and your subflows. Uh, just one more note in here is uh, since Washington, D.C. and the advent of Workflow Studio, you these, no, these links no longer work anymore. So you used to be able to fire this up from the classic, and I'll just do it uh, in another tab here. And it used to fire up the flow in Flow Designer, but uh, this doesn't work anymore. We get this error message about asset not found. So the, I think the redirects uh, are broken or whatever. I'm sure they'll fix that. OK, let's go to the second table that is uh, important and interesting. And that is what we see in Workflow Studio or in Flow Design. In Workflow Studio, it's called Operations. In uh, flow designer, it was called executions. Uh, operations is a much more friendly name. And so this is, if we go to flows over here, these are all of the flow execution contexts. Uh, so all the flows that have run, uh, so we can see, you know, what happened with them. Um, so if we go into, back to the classic here, these are found in sys underscore uh, flow underscore context. I do a dot list. 
And again, I just see exact same data, uh, just in a different format here, uh, just in the in in this UI. Um, I will point out a an important column or important columns in this uh, in this table, and that is the source table and the source record columns. So these are not visible by default. You have to go into uh, edit the column list and put them in there. But the source record table will it contains the sys ID of the record that the flow uh, was triggered from. Um, so you can see I have this test flow that I had for another video, and I can see that the executions uh, are affecting this. So the reason why this column is useful is let's say you have a record, and let's go to my incident table and let's say I have a record, uh, you know, this one, and there are, let's say there's a bunch of flows on this and I'm trying to figure out how the heck did this data get changed? What, uh, what happened? And so I will copy the sys ID of this record and I'll go into here, or I can go into the classic view to the sys flow context table, but you can do it in here. Uh, go to the source record, do a filter is, and I throw the sys ID in there of the record, and it's going to bring me up all the contexts that are uh, that were triggered by that record. Uh, so I can see this is one of them, and uh, I don't have reporting turned on, but normally, right, you click on that, and it brings you to the execution of that, and you can see what happened. Uh, so super useful column when it comes to debugging and troubleshooting and figure out what the heck happened with a given record. So those are two uh, really useful uh, tables that are behind uh, flows, subflows, and their executions in ServiceNow.